Hello, good morning, and welcome back to the fish locker out on the shore. Right, I come to this mark last week. I did all right, considering it was the first time I'd ever been here. Yeah, I thought I did okay. Um, I learned a lot of lessons though. Hopefully, I'm going to try and capitalize on what I learned last session, this session. I'm also trying a different tide. I don't know if you've heard before, I've said in videos that when you come, whenever you come to a new mark, try every, every different scenario. So last time I fished an evening tide, today I'm fishing a morning tide. The sun has just come up, you can't tell because it isn't the it isn't the nicest day. And I am going to be testing out one of my new Christmas presents. Now, I've just got my baits out. Anybody who watches the videos knows I like to get a bait out first before I start doing anything else and set the camera up, etc. Now, we have got a bit of wind today. Wind's coming off my back. Hopefully, when the tide starts coming in, we're gonna have to move off. We'll get a little bit more shelter in there. So I'm sorry if it's a little bit noisy right now. But yeah, the rigs are very simple. I just fish uh, two hook, either one up one down or two up one down the wessex rigs i'll talk you through those in a bit i've been getting a bite on there so i'll quickly set the camera up i've had baits in the water about maybe 10 minutes and i'm just using lugworm today and i've got another hour of the ebb so the tide's going down for one more hour so i'm going to fish one hour down one hour up and then i'm going to move over there and i'm going to fish maybe another two or three four hours uh, i'm hoping for bass flounders if i'm really lucky maybe even a late season bring I'll just see. The water temperature still stayed quite high. The air temperature, it's lovely today, even though it's its quite muggy. I don't know, it's probably about 14 degrees. But yeah, fingers crossed, we will be able to pull out a couple of fish. I'll show you real quickly before I get them put in a tub. That was a schoolie and a whiting. Yeah, them baits had only been out, like say 10 minutes, and I'd already had a bite. And on that, it was a two up, one down rig. I had a whiting and a little schoolie bass. Now I had worried, because we have had quite a bit of rain recently. We've got a lot of fresh water down. The water is like mud. The last time I fished here, the clarity was fantastic. So I was worried we've been too much fresh water down that it pushed all the fish out. But if we're getting whiting up in here and they're a sea fish, I'm hoping there's still going to be some fish about. I mean, flounders and scurly bass and bream, they'll live in brackish water fine. You catch them, catch them right up the river. But with the whiting being here, yeah, I'm hopeful that we might see a few fish. Fingers crossed anyway. Um, in my mind, I like to think that the fish feed better on the flooding tide. So to catch a couple on the ebb, I'm hopeful that we're going to catch a few fish. I've probably jinxed myself now, like. <laughs> yeah, all I'm using for bait is fresh lugworm. And you can see what type they are. <laughs> Stained my hands bright yellow straight away. Yep, I'll get these fish returned. I'm getting some more decent bites on that rod there but what i'm going to do is instead of like striking and winding straight in i've got multiple hooks and flounders and especially in dirty water like this they'll feed by disturbance so if you're really in really slowly as in, instead of winding it straight in to get the fish in if you're really in really slowly so it all drags along the bottom like that hopefully i might pick up another fish that's how i picked up the best flounder in the last session There's a fish. Well, the fish are biting, but unfortunately they're small and they're bass. And that's just on. Oh, that's a proper bite, that one. Rod was nearly away. Oh, I hope you saw that in the background there. I just heard the rod rattling on the rod wreck.
Yeah, hopefully what hopefully whatever that was comes back. Just stood the rod rattling around on the rod rest. I hope when I look back at the footage I could see that. It looks like it's still there. I'll get this bait shot back out and I'll have a look at all that noise. I'm trying to capitalise on the small amount of time I've got here in this place. When I've gone back to the other spot, I'll spend more time talking to you about the rigs. Well, that's not what we wanted. And another waiting. But yeah, we're getting plagued out by these in the minute. At least we're catching fish. That same rod again. Another one. All I've got on there is just a size four hook with a couple of beads. What do you see? And a little bit of lugworm. The tide's just started to turn now and the bites are coming thick and fast. So it's exactly like I thought. We are getting well into the fish but hopefully we'll find some bigger ones and some flounder as well. That's the aim. I'm hoping, hoping for a couple of nice flounder. Now. Right, well the fish are just coming thick and fast. Unfortunately though, it is all schoolies that are like that big. They're just non-stop. I must just be fishing into a, just a shoal of them. Because every single time the baits are out there showing it, I've got a bite now. <laughs> so it's definitely worked. There's a lot of fish around. But unfortunately, it's all little tiny schoolies. The wind is picking up a little bit. And... Yeah, we've got about another 20 minutes here before I'm going to have to move back or I'm going to get cut off. So I'm going to fish it hard and I'll have a chat to you when I've moved. There it is. Can't really miss that one, can you? Yes. The persistence has paid off. With a lovely little flounder. Now this one, oh god, it's, it's barely even a pound. It won't be. It won't, it won't reach a pound, and it has an awful lot of orange spots on it. Now it has taken the hook quite deep into here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to unclip it, put in that pail of water, and I'll show you about unhooking them. But yeah, that was just exactly like I'd said about. I'd had a bite at distance. And I don't think it was this fish. And all I did was I just started reeling it in really slowly, like dragging it along the bottom. And um, yeah. Managed to get ourselves a nice little flounder. 
Right, I'll get another bait out and then we'll get this fish sorted out. Brilliant, target species. Right, unhooking this fish. What I'm gonna use is this. And all you do is you slide just in. Right, it's time to move back before I get cut off. We'll just go and let this fish go. There he is. You can see what I mean by this flounder. Being that it has got quite a few red spots on it. But you can always tell because it has a few hard nodules there and some right on the edge of here. So even though it's got red spots like a place, because it's got these and the wide tail, you know, it's a flounder. Right. There it goes. Get some idea of the clarity now, don't you? I've moved back where I was was on one of those islands there and unfortunately the place where I wanted to go by the time I'd packed my gear up and gone there there was two blokes sat there fishing so if I come to somewhere else I've never fished here it's only the second time I've ever fished that mark and the reason why I picked this is because as you can see the tide runs in around all these yellow boys there I thought there'll be eddies there there'll be slack eddies where there'll be fish so I've set my rods up a little bit further back <laughs> I really don't like this type of fishing because you just end up you just end up absolutely covered in mud <laughs> but yes I've, I've been here for about half an hour and I thought I won't set the camera up until I catch a fish because there are also there are a lot of grey clouds coming around and I thought if it starts raining I'm going to go but we've had some success I'll show you now Again, on the bottom hook with some flotation beads on, there is a lovely flounder. This one is quite pale, but again, lots of little red spots. Now, it's one of the things that I've, I've mentioned to folks before, is you do get an awful lot of hybridization between flatfish. I, I, I can't remember the exact figure, but I think it's something like 60% of the flatfish in the North Sea are some form of a hybrid, being flounder, place, dab, they're all a mixture so you will see characteristics from one to another which is why sometimes it's hard to ID one because there will be this is a flounder I know it's a flounder by its shape by the size of its tail and because it's got that hard and up the sides of here a place would be a more delicate fish and have brighter spots oh, there's a fish. Another little schoolie bass. This guy's going to be easier to unhook. I'll get these baits back out, we'll let that bass go, and I'll see about unhooking that flounder. 
I'm going to see a box showing you the unhooking of this flounder. Now I've tried this a couple of times and I just can't get the video right. Basically I've made up a little tiny tool. I just made it out of a piece of coat hanger and all it's got is it's just got a little curved end. And what you're supposed to do is when a flounder or a dab or a place has swallowed a hook down deep is you go in just underneath, if this is the gill cover, you go in just underneath it like that, up around to the mouth, wrap the line round it, then pull it out through the gill. Because if a hook is stuck in that way like that into the fish's mouth and you can't get it out, by pulling it through the gill it turns the hook so it's the other way around. I'll try and show you. <laughs> It'd be much easier if there was somebody else here videoing it for me. What I'm going to do is just slide this up the inside of the gill cover. Now you're not coming in contact with any of the gills. You just open out like that. Then wrap the line around it a couple of times. And then very gently pull back through. That has turned the hook out. Look, I can see the hook here actually. Might be able to pull this out this way. That worked perfectly. You see how I did that? So the hook was stuck in. The hook was stuck in that way. I pulled with this tool, I went in round the line and pulled it back out so I turned the hook that way around. So the hook was stuck into the fish that way. Then by putting this tool in through its mouth I managed to get hold of the hook like that and then pull the hook out. Lovely little flounder. Look at that, another schoolie. Tell you what, I'm not a fan of this mud. couple more worms shot out. We'll have to move back in a minute. I'm going to take a couple of seconds now to just talk you through the rigs. Now anybody who's watched my other estuary videos will know that my, my preferred rig for fishing like this is a Wessex rig. It's a one up one down rig. Basically it has one hook above the lead like that and then one hook below the lead I like it because it fishes baits in two different ways one tight on the bottom and one just off the bottom one of the things that I learnt last time I came is that there are an awful lot of crabs that is partly to do with the fact that it's still so mild the water's still warm the air's still warm a good frost will put the crabs off so all of my rigs I've been putting a few floating beads on so the bullet the bait on the bottom is popped up a little bit I mean it might only pop it up that far but if it keeps it away from the crabs for an extra five minutes it's more chance of catching a fish and I'm just using fine wire size four hooks the baits I'm using it's just just lug these are local dug lug local dug lug and literally all you do depending on which way you I've been moving it around a little bit. Sometimes I'll hook it from the fat end first and I just thread it up the hook and leave a little tiny bit off like that. Or I'll do it the other way around so the juicy ends near the hook point. Now I do experiment a little bit with the bait. I haven't seen any any preference in which way you do it just so long as it's on the hook. And either side of my floating beads I put a sequin one so it butts up against there, one so it butts up against the bait. I like that. And what I've been finding the last time I came was that the flounders were taking it on the retrieve. So what I was doing was I was casting out to distance 
and like every five or ten minutes just giving the reel a wind just giving it one wind like that just so that it moves the bait a little bit on the bottom and then once I'd, if I'd had a bite or if it had been out there for 10-15 minutes and I thought I'll check the baits it's just winding in really slowly because then all that happens is instead of instead of you lifting your lead and your, your hooks up off the seabed is it drags this lead right along the seabed and behind it some floating beads and hopefully a bait so as the lead slides along trundles along on the ground it creates little puffs of sand and mud a fish will see that because it'll think oh it's disturbance they don't know what a lead is they just think oh it's a bit of disturbance they go in there to find it and then straight behind where all the disturbance is this is going past I've caught a lot of flounders doing that the leads I've, I've been changing the leads quite a bit as well because the tide does course through and I want I want the baits to move a little bit so when the tide was really running like now I've got fours four ounce leads and I've got either these pear shaped ones or like dumpy round ones so it'll roll if I had a flat lead or a grip lead it would stay in one place I don't want that to happen I want the baits to go and search out the fish when the tide dropped off almost to slack water I dropped down to a two ounce and then a one ounce just so it still kept moving that little tiny bit and as soon as the tide started picking up again and flooding increased the lead weight I think I've got another scully on that one down there <laughs> this one had me thinking it was a bigger fish the little schoolie and a patch of weed coming in I was thinking oh this is going to be a cracker this might even be a double shot nah just a patch of weed and a schoolie now you see the tide's right up to my tripod now so I'll, I'll be able to cast these last baits out and I'm going to have to move back but yeah must be hundreds of these guys down there this is why I always bring one of these tubs. Not only is it somewhere for me to wash my hands, but look as now, this fish has a chance to recover in here. And he's ready to go back. Some lovely markings on it. And it's not hard to see how people sometimes confuse this as place. about in the shallows get yourself back out there Gosh. right well I'm fishing the last baits out the last ones are just on that rod down there and this one came in with a double shot of schoolies now this one actually I've noticed this in quite a few when you get them and they are absolutely tiny like this one they sometimes have little tiny speckly spots on their back but yeah these are nice to see but not big enough well I've had a fantastic little session and I've had a chance to use my Christmas present which was this it's a, a, a Pentidal XR420 now <laughs> I don't know if anybody else's missus does this but she was like well what do you want because if I buy it if she buys it it won't be exactly what I need so she said just pick what you want I thought about the three there's, there's three different ranges in this and I thought this one this one's casting weight of 100 to 225 gram the thing that I'm the most impressed by is the bite detection this tip on here has been fantastic even little tiny schoolie bites little flounder bites and I was casting out four ounce leads and it was it was hooping over perfect yeah I am very impressed this is the type of rod last time when I came I fished my two every ground rods just because I didn't have one of these this is this is what you need for this It'd be perfect for estuary fishing or like light open coast onto clean ground fishing for things like flatties yeah, I like this. but also the real this rival the reason <laughs> there every now and again you just see a little thing and you think that's a good idea that I like that now some reels in order to put them in your tackle box you have to wind out like a screw or you unwind the unwind unwrap you unwind the reel like a handle with this one here there is a little button there and all you do is you press the button in and it collapses and then press the button and it collapses 
Now, I like that. <laughs> it's the little things that make the difference. So far, it's real. I haven't really tested it because of all of them. All I've been bringing in is fish less than a pound. But yeah, it casts nice. It's nice and smooth. It's got a big handle. And I like this little gadget on here. Well, I hope you've enjoyed joining me. I hope you found it interesting. I hope some of the tips covered in this video will help you catch some flounders, some schoolie bass in your estuary fishing. It's perfect this time of year as well when you need to try and get a little bit of shelter. All the very best. See you later.